Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble, and I am here today with Gail Taylor. And we're going to talk about her journey. And what I think is really cool about her is that she has a similar background to me, is that she used to work in finance. And now she's a musician, which a lot of people think that is just the weirdest combination when they talk to me anyway. They're just like, you're a unicorn. Like, how many people work in finance and they're also a musician? So I'm really looking forward to hearing about that and how she went from finance to musician and how she um, her, runs her business now as a musician. I know it's going to be really inspiring to you guys. So let's start off, Gail, with let us know a little bit about you and your journey and kind of, like I said, how you went from being in the financial world to deciding to start a musician business. Okay. And thank you very much for having me. I'm honored that I get to chat with you and, and the folks out there. Um, so I was in the financial business for 25 years. I was a financial advisor and a successful one. In fact, I define it as my goal was to make my clients financially independent and make myself financially independent. And I did socially responsible investments. So we were, uh, we were building our wealth while strengthening the world. So that was my journey there. And I, and I loved it. I loved my work. And then in my late 50s, I decided to take piano lessons. And I mean, you can imagine here, I'm starting with the scales. I have no music background. And so at 58, I'm taking piano lessons. A couple of years later, I thought, oh my God, I love this. I, we have more parallels than you think, Brie. I get up at four in the morning. Oh, you're one of <laughs> those morning girls too. So oh I'll my get gosh. Up and I'd play the piano for a couple hours and I, oh, I was having so much fun that I thought, you know what? I'm going to retire and study music full time. I can do it. I'm financially independent. So why not? So at 61, I retired to study music full time. Two years later, still having so much fun, I thought, hey, I'm going to reinvent myself as a musician. <laughs> So then at this part of my journey, I everyone kept saying, I tell people this story and they go, wow, that's so inspiring. I'm going to go do ba-deep, ba-deep. And, and so I thought, I kept hearing this over and over again. And I thought, whoa, I'm going to come out of retirement and monetize this. <laughs> I'm going to take my music and my public speaking background, because when I was in finance, I was a public speaker for 35 years. So I'm going to become a keynote speaker and try to help folks uh, become their best selves, sharing my stories and sharing my music and making that a part of the journey. And so, yeah, now we're two years into it and I've been developing the startup version of my music business during COVID. <laughs> Did you actually start your music business during COVID? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, my, the day my company opened was January 1st, 2020. Oh. So, <laughs> so I've been uh, pretty much open for two years. And, but you know what? When you're as new at it as me, there's a big learning curve. There's a lot of startups. Um, I'm a songwriter first and foremost. I'm a keyboardist and I'm a keynote speaker. And now with the world the way it is, I can take my songs and hire studios and musicians and bring them to life and then distribute them through, you know, DistroKid, CD Baby. And it's so wonderful to be able to do that in this day and age. You're not dependent on a third party accepting your, your product. You can take it to life. 
You know what? I just, I want to say, I love that perspective because a lot of times I hear a lot of complaining musicians. Oh, I have to do all this stuff myself. Like, I don't want to do this. I just want to make music. And you're like, no, this is amazing that I have this ability to do this. And I have this kind of access. And that's what I'm always trying to get across to musicians, you know, that have that like negative mindset. So I love that you said that. Yeah, there's no gatekeepers anymore. No, nope. I mean, you you can the you know the sky's the limit. You could do whatever you want to do with your music, and it's interesting what you said about the negative, because eh, that was actually in the beginning of me coming into music. I was asked this. I was interviewed by one of our radio stations. I'm in Canada. I'm in Western Canada, and I was being interviewed, and they said you know, what negative things have you heard so far on this music journey? And I said, if there's only, there's only one that I kept hearing, and it was that, well, as long as you love the music, because there's no money in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I kept hearing that from people in the music industry. And I'm thinking, do you guys know how big the music industry is? <laughs> like it's billions of dollars. True. And even the indie version of it is like $18 billion. So it's like, yeah, no, I'm not buying that. There's a niche. There's a place for everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, we are definitely on the same page on that one for sure. And so I'm I'm curious, like what what things from your work as a financial advisor did you transfer over into this new business? Like were there certain habits or certain ways of doing things or organizing or anything like that that you very easily just transferred over? Like this is what a successful business needs to do, and therefore I need to do that in my music business too. Yeah, yeah, what you just said, everything. <laughs> right? it's not, there's no, it's not like, uh, you know, when you talk about having a business plan, for instance, right, you need a business plan, and you need a strategic plan. So a business plan, it doesn't really matter what your product is, whether your product is a song that you're going to then produce and release to inspire folks, or whether your product is a financial plan that you're going to prepare for a client and then administer to help them with their financial independence, it's still the same thread. It's still, you're taking your product or your service and you're bringing it to life. I, I'm very fortunate in that, and I did a lot of my studies with Berkeley School because they have that such on, that online program that's so amazing. And uh, I, I'm very fortunate that because of my business background, I love business. Mm -hmm. I, I just embrace it. It was just like, it was something I love. So be, to be able to take the music side and the business side and combine them, even listening to you this morning on time management. Oh my God, I'm a master at time management. <laughs> And, then, and all the things you and Michael were saying, it was like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that that's exactly right. That Yeah, you got it. And so it was, uh, it, for me, it, the, the two of them just really fit nice in a pocket. But I think what I'd like to share for other folks is that like, I always I always tell everybody, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, I think you should do something that you love for a living. Right. I think you should be passionate about whatever it is you're going to do for a living. Find something. You spend at least th a third of your life doing it. So you should like it. So when I go to work, I mean, I do have a type A personality and, and to work 10, 12 hours a day. To me, it's like, well, that's like living 10, 12 hours a day. <laughs> I don't know. It, it just it. So so I think that's really important. And if you're really passionate about the music side, but you're you're struggling with, I, I, I'm really struggling with this business side of it, then partner up, join a band, you know, find a way to, we don't all have the same passions and the same strengths and weaknesses and the same expertise. So find the ones that you love doing and outsource the other parts. Oh yeah, I'm definitely on board for that, for sure. Because 
not only do you, is it helpful to outsource the parts that either you don't like to do or you're not good at, but like eventually if your business gets big enough, you can't possibly do it all anyway. So you need to outsource. And the goal is to get your business to the point where you do, you are big enough that you absolutely have to outsource, right? Yep. And and you're going to love this. Guess who I first outsourced my social media to? My daughter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. We were, I was just saying that we do have so much in common. I mean, it's crazy like <laughs> that, you know, and our business background. Also, when I was, you know, touring as a musician, I basically did keynote concerts, like you said, right. like stories and songs, right? So we're very, very similar. Um, and we have this type A personality, like we're, looks like we're basically the same person, except I'm a little bit younger than you. Not a lot. There you go. There not you a go. lot anymore. <laughs> well, and that's one of my messages too, right? You can reinvent yourself at any age and, yep. you know, it's not, uh, I think, you played my song "Staying Young" on uh, on your on your radio show, and and thank you very much. I really appreciate that. But one of the things that inspired me to write "Staying Young" was I found that a lot of the folks I met since I joined the music industry seemed to think that if they hadn't hit a certain level or made it by the time they got out of their twenties, then it was over. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> yeah, no, that's not how life works. You don't, you don't have to hit whatever it is you want to hit. And I guess that's another big thing. What do you want, right? I think, what are your goals, whether you're a financial advisor or a musician or, or making widgets, you have to be able to get that vision going, figure out what it is that you want in the end, in the five years down the road, in the 10 years down the road, and then work backwards towards trying to achieve it. Because it doesn't, some folks want to be that top 40 pop star with the fame and the fortune and that, and that's where they want to go. And that's great. All the more power to them. Others want to be studio musicians where they can go home at four <laughs> o'clock and take care of the kids for the rest of the day. And, and, and that's their passions, right? That's, I really think that's a big uh, key for everyone. Yeah. And I think that changes based upon what stage of life you're in. Like for me, you know, when I was doing the musician thing and I was touring and all of that, that was that stage of life. I had wanted that for a long time and I finally got to do it and I was able to do it because I had younger kids at that point. Then I got to the stage where it wasn't so feasible. Either I'd have to be gone for a long time and miss out on my kids' stuff, or I, I couldn't really drag them with me anymore. So I had to make a choice. And, you know, now that I have a college, one that's in college and one that's going into eighth grade, I could then take on another music job again, which I did this year. I hadn't been doing like a steady music related performing type job for all these years because of the different, you know, life stage that I was in. So you have to base it upon, like what you said, the passion that you have, do you really want to do this thing? The talent that you have to do that, you know, maybe some people could not be a um, keynote speaker because they're just, they just will never be a good speaker in front of people. That's okay. Right. That's not your talent. And then it's the drive. Do you have enough drive to do it? And as you said, like some people want to be a top 40 artist. Cool. When you're in your twenties and that's kind of what I wanted. But when I, when I got to my thirties, I realized that's not what I want anymore. I just want to have a job doing music in some way. I, like you said, I want to spend that one third of my life. That's my job doing music. Cause that's what I love. And I was willing to open my mind to other ways that I could do that instead of just that one way that I had in my mind in my twenties. Yeah. And that's perfect, right? <laughs> just to be able to pivot through your life as the, mm -hmm. uh, as the ebb and flows happen with our lives. And so I think that's, uh, that's a really important part of everybody's journey to be able to define where am I now and where do I want to be? Yep. Well, let's talk about business plans. Cause I know you're really big on that. Um, and so I guess what I really want to know is like, how formal do you think this thing needs to be? Do we, do we need to write up a, 
you know, this whole like thing with a, an index and like, it's all in a nice little folder and you can give it, show it to people. Like, is it, is it for other people? Is it for you to get investors or you to get backers? Or is it for you just to make sure that you know exactly where you're going? All of the above. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely everything that you said. And I guess it depends on where you're in in your journey and where you want to go. So if you're looking at um, uh, financial backing, right? If you're looking at, even if it's doing a uh, uh, crowdfunding or however it is that you want financial backing, both strategic plans and business plans uh, can be very simple documents or they can be very comprehensive, like you said, with the index. And, and, and I think that in today's world, it is so easy to get access to free templates or $49 or, mm -hmm. you know, take an eight week course on how to write a business plan. And it's going to take you a total of two hours a week. And it's $79.95. <laughs> like we are in, we're in an information age, like we've never been before. And so learning how to do these things is quite simple. Um, because my business background, I go with the bigger, the better in the sense that if you have a really clear understanding of where you want to go, this is my business and this is what I'm going to do with my business. And this is the kind of money I want to make with my business. And this is uh, the approach that I'm going to take to get there. And here's the financial costs that it's going to be. And here's where I'm going to get those funds in order to be able to do it. If you can, if you can, you know, take three months, like you said, with, uh, you know, when you were talking on that earlier summit about time management, if you can take uh, an hour a day for three months and block it off in your calendar and say, I'm going to spend one hour working on my business plan and just keep working through it. I think that the rewards will, the more you spend, the deeper you get, the more rewards you're going to get from it. The more things are going to come to life, the more you're going to be able to make it all a reality. Yeah, no, definitely. You can break it out in that way and get it done. I think the real question that people listening might be having in their mind is when is it time to do this? Like maybe they've just started dipping their toe in they're doing a few performances but they still have a job like when is when do they switch from i'm just a freelancer or i'm just like trying this music thing out or i'm just doing a few gigs to like oh this is a business i think it's when they decide that they want to make a career out of their music and mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, be an employee, right? Because whether you're an artist, whether you're a vocalist or a keyboardist or a songwriter, there's so many different areas in the music industry. And you can go and you can get a, a full-time job working in somebody else's business. And if that's what you want to do, then you don't have to make a business plan to do that. You, you can make a little strategic plan on how you're going to make your manifest your career into happening, <laughs> right? You could still plan it out and make it happen. I mean, I, I have little, you know, you probably read Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. I and mean, I've been doing personal growth and self-help since the 70s. <laughs> and I still, I still have little things pasted to my mirror every morning that I read. Okay, this is what I'm going to achieve. And so, you know, believing in yourself and figuring out where it is you want to go. I don't think you bring the business plan into play until you decide Hey, I want to. I want my own business. I want this to be, you know, my band, me and my band, or me as a solo artist. I want to be. I want to run this as a business. So, just a quick definitional check: What is the difference between a business plan and a strategic plan? Uh, a business plan mm -hmm. is a, a a plan on 
what the business is. So it's going to tell you who's in the business, who the key players in the business are, who, who, who the people are that are going to be in the business, what it is they're offering, what service or product they're, they're offering, and how that fits within the industry. So if their service is in the music industry, then what's the size of the music industry? And where are all the revenues coming out of that music industry so that you know that it's viable and that it fits? And then you'll have your marketing plan and how it is you're going to get this product out to the uh to the people that are going to benefit from it. And then there's going to be the financial plans as to how that's going to work. So that's sort of the framework of a business plan. It'll have an executive summary at the, at the beginning of it. And you'll sort of outline all that in a couple of pages, and then you'll have those different sections to it. Where so, so then your strategic plan, your strategic plan is, you know, I used to take my team, I had a team, when I was a financial advisor of assistants and associates, and I used to take them off site for about three days a year, and we do the strategic plan for a year. And mm -hmm. so it would be a plan that was based on, okay, what do we want to do this year? Where do we want to take our products to? What's the next level? Are we working on R&D? Is there research and development here that we have to work on? Uh, what's, what do we have right now? What are the resources that we have right now that we need to accomplish this? And what are the ones we need? So what's missing, right? Where's the gap? What is it that we're missing? And who's going to go fix those and, and acquire those missing things? So, you know, team number one, one, you'll go get this. And number two, you'll go get this. And so, so then you spend the year working through the strategy. That's how, it, for me anyway, that's how I differentiated them. That makes sense. The business plan is more the overarching thing. Like this is what this business is and this is how we're going to, you know, make money, right? Versus the strategic plan is like a, a time-based thing. And these are the projects we're going to do to achieve the goals that we had in the business plan. And here's how we're going to get it done. And if it's just you in the business, right? If you're a solopreneur, then you're probably going to do all the things or you're going to be like, I don't want to do some of these things. I need to outsource some of these things. And then that helps you figure out like where you need to, to spend your money and where you need, you need to spend your time and where you need to bring people in to, to have their time and all that stuff. So I, I, th I definitely see that the goal setting that I love talking about is kind of the, even the further breakdown of the strategic plan, because the st strategic plan might be like, then, you know, over the next year, this is where we're going. And then we're going to break it down into like quarters. And how are we going to get that done? What are the goals going to be for this first quarter, second quarter, you know, in order to reach those final goals. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. And also who's going to do it, right? Because yep. what you just said, like in the business plan, I might say that I'm going to use social media a lot to do my marketing and um, focus specifically maybe on Facebook and Instagram because of the demographics. But when I get down to the strategic plan, I'm talking about who I'm going to outsource the social media to. Am I hiring a third party company? Are we doing three posts a week? Are we right. doing videos on our posts are we doing what kind of media are we using and yeah so it's and then and then once you get that all uh locked down then you take it into your okay what are the goals for this week what three things do i have to pull out of my strategic plan and put into my time i use a sauna me too yes i know <laughs> i heard you say that this morning that's funny <laughs> So yeah, exactly. What am I going to put into what are the three things I got to get done today in order to make sure that I don't drop the ball. I want to share one other thing too, because I've noticed this a lot and people in the music industry as well as other industry. I don't like crisis management. I don't, I don't like it. It's not a place that I like to be at. And so what, how I strategically work through this, and I wrote a song on this too, called Time is on My Side, mm -hmm. <laughs> on time management. Because what I strategically do is if I have a deadline to have something done, 
I change that deadline to anywhere from, depending on the size of the project, anywhere from three to seven days prior to when the deadline is. Mm -hmm. So I, I give myself a false uh, deadline that's real because that way I'm always working on something important, but it's never time sensitive. Kind of like Stephen Covey talked about this in that book, First Things First, mm. right? So so you're doing your priority tasks, but, you know, they don't, they, they, they're not due for another week. So you're not scrambling. And if all of a sudden you got a phone call and, hey, somebody canceled and we got a big opportunity for you, are you free for the next three days? I could say, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, no. And also I was thinking about this when I got COVID, like, what if I had, I'd be like, oh, I got plenty of time to get this done. You know, my calendar is pretty clear that week I can get it done. And then I get COVID and I'm like, like completely out, you know, just like no energy, can't do a single thing, can't even get myself to sit in front of the computer. And if I had not given myself extra time for X, Y, and Z, I would be out of luck. Right. Cause you can't just assume that like you've got, even though you've got this time on your calendar that you will necessarily for sure be able to do it at that time, something could happen. You know, your, your child could get sick, your pet could get sick, you could get sick. You know, like you said, some cool opportunity could come up and someone could say, we want to fly you to New York to speak at this conference, all expenses paid, but it, it's in three days because the person, you know, that was going to do it dropped out and we, and we want to have you do it. Like you want to be able to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. I actually have that. I call them curveballs when life throws curveballs at you. And uh, I had the one that you just, well, I don't know if I had COVID, but today's my first day of, uh, second day of being better. I, I'm i heading to Nashville in three weeks to record an EP. And there's six songs and I'm going to be the keyboardist. And this is the first time I'm going to be a musician in my own music. Mm. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> I got to that level. But eight days ago or nine days ago, I got a flu that was so bad mm -hmm. that I was I was in bed for seven days and I tested every day and I kept testing negative. So I have no clue if I had COVID or not. I just know that I was really, really sick for a week. And, you know, when I was talking to some people there, they're oh, are you going to have to postpone your, your Nashville trip to get ready? I thought, heck no. no. <laughs> Time management. <laughs> <laughs> I, it doesn't matter. I was planning to be ready a week before I was going. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. And, and there are, there's so many curveballs that life can throw at you. So you just, you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, I did want to ask you, like, are you experiencing business in a, in a different way in the music industry? Or do you feel like it's, it's really not that different than any other industries? I'm not finding it different than other industries, except for every industry is different, <laughs> right? There was a lot of education that I had to take to be a financial advisor, right? I mean, to me, it's all, uh, uh, you have to learn a product inside out, and then you have to put your sales hat on and you have to talk people into experiencing your product. Right. Yeah. And so, and so to me, it doesn't matter what, what your industry is, you, it takes a lot of uh, time to learn that industry. So that's why I say, go for your passions. I mean, I'm studying music and I'm always taking courses and I've taken a few of yours. I've taken all, all these online things that are available are just awesome. I'm constantly getting in on these things, but I'm also taking them with the universities. I mentioned Berkeley. I've done U of A and Grant McEwen up here. Um, and I just, and I'm loving it though. It's not like when I'm, when I, oh, I have to go study for two hours. It's yeah, I gotta go study for two hours and learn some more about this music stuff. <laughs> but, and so, yeah, I think that uh, whatever industry you're in, I told my grandson he should take, he should go into the industry of gaming because he loves that so much. And mm -hmm. then, well, why don't you make it a career? 
<laughs> You're having so much fun with it. Learn how to make a game. <laughs> I just think that, you know, that that's it. All industries have, you have to learn the industry, but they're all going to be sort of in their own identical and to totally the same and totally different at the same time. Well, and I think there's so many opportunities nowadays, like you were just saying about someone that loves gaming. Like there are people that like make a living with people watching them play a game on video. Like, I just think it's crazy. Like, like uh <laughs> switch or whatever, you know, yep, yep. their whole audience is watching them play a game. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's, that's, that's a thing now. <laughs> But yeah, you can monetize your passion in so many different ways. And what I love about you is that like, because I think it's partly because you came to this later in life, you just have so much joy and excitement around music and sharing it with other people and like making it fun. And it, have you kind of made that part of your, your brand? Yes, but it's, it's part of my brand, but it's also part of my personality. <laughs> Right, it's Which is also am. part of your brand. You just uh, but you know what? When when people are saying like, "Oh, I have trouble self promoting," and I'm thinking, but if you believe in yourself and you believe in your music and you feel like that people are going to benefit from hearing it, why wouldn't you be standing on the rooftop saying, "Hey, I have a new song"? And you know what? We're none of us are going to be all things to all people. You're right. gonna. And if you want to get into the entertainment business, you got to have thick skin, right? People are going to love you and you're, they're, you're, they're going to be the right fan base and the right audience for what you're producing. People are not going to like what you're doing and they're either just going to ignore you all together or they're going to say something mean because that's who they are. Mm -hmm. and, and it is what it is, right? That's just, that's the reality. But oh yeah, when I release a new song and we go out to the restaurant, I make sure everybody in the restaurant knows that, hey, I released a new song today. <laughs> I just think it's really, yeah, yeah, be proud of yourself. Be proud of who you are. That's and awesome. I love that. And honestly, like I just turned 50 and I feel like that's some of the gift of getting older, like not taking yourself so seriously, not being, like you said, not being worried to like, what will people think if I tell these random strangers that I have a new song out, right? I think that's a big gift of life experience and just maturity. And I certainly would never have done so many of the things I'm doing now in my 20s because I just would have been scared to death. Right, right. And I know, and for a lot of young people too, it's even more challenging. It's like, I got interviewed by a couple of university students for their newspapers, their, 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 uh, their university newspaper. And it's like, they think they can't miss a beat mm. and I'm there. Oh heck, you don't have to know what you want to do now do what you think you want to do. And then when you want to change to something else, pivot and change to something else, life isn't walking a straight line, you know, it, it isn't. And you're going to, make mistakes sometimes you cause them sometimes life just threw curveballs at you it doesn't matter you know just enjoy the journey because that's what it's about you can have these beautiful end goals but you better enjoy going towards them because if you don't when you get there it's going to be a little anticlimactic and so yeah that's what i always tell young people just you know don't worry about five years 20 years from now enjoy the journey you're on and go for what it is that's important to you at this juncture. Yeah. And you don't know, you really don't know what that step four or five for you is going to be because you can't see it now no. and that's okay. Like you're going to enjoy getting there. Like I certainly didn't know as I was working as a director of finance that I was going to have a music career. And then I didn't know that from there I was going to be a music educator. Like and I didn't know I was going to become a director of worship at a church. Like that was never on my list. Right. But it just happened because it was the next logical step from where I was based upon the way the circumstances played out. Right. And that I took, I made choices like, oh, I really do like this thing. I want to try going down this path, see how it goes. Right. And so you, I, I think that's very true. Like I have a, a daughter who's 19 and I feel like from 
even like eighth grade, they were told like, you've got to figure out what you want to do. You need to know this now. You need to know what your major is. Like, I didn't even discover that I wanted to be a business major until my second year of college. But my daughter last year was just like, oh no, they want you to know. They want you to, you know, declare and all that when you're a freshman. I'm like, that's not fair. It's yeah. not giving you a chance to like explore and, and figure out what really aligns with you. No. So I just tell them that's okay that they want that. So you declare what it is that's in your head at this moment mm -hmm. and understand that it might be different in 12 months or 24 months from now. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And don't feel like you can't change your mind. Exactly. <laughs> like everyone's going to hate you or something. And you just got to, <laughs> just because you said it, you got to keep going down that path, even though you have taken some classes and you can't stand it. <laughs> like, I know. I you know. know. <laughs> you've got, you've got control over your own life. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Well, this has been so awesome. What you know, do you have any like last bits of wisdom that you think are really important for our audience of DIY musicians to, to hear from, from someone who, you know, has, has really a ton of experience in all areas of life and has come to music a little bit later on. And you just have so much passion for music. I would just love to hear if you have any specific advice for, for people that we didn't cover yet. I think the the one thing that's jumping in my head right now, because I'm seeing it in the music industry, there's a little bit of a defeatist attitude mm. or a negative <laughs> attitude when things go wrong or the fact that things change so quickly in this industry. Oh my God, we were making money off a of CD and albums and now they don't exist. <laughs> and so and so I think I think my word of advice would be uh, find a way to flip the negative into a positive and work on, I mean, you love it, it's your passion. Work on the positive sides of it. You know, I, I, I learned happiness to me, like every day has to be fun. <laughs> I just, I just, that's how I live. I have to be happy. And I learned many, many years ago that if a negative thought jumps in my head, then I have to immediately give it the boot. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing the negative stuff. And I remember reading a book years and years ago. I think her name was Gail Alencola. She was an Olympic runner. And she said what she did was whenever she found a negative, oh my God, this is probably in the 70s or 80s I read this. Whenever she thought found a negative attitude, uh, thought in her head, or not, she'd trigger it out and then start thinking of something positive. So I stole her trigger and I still remember it decades later. And it was garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. So if I if I found myself whining to myself or whining to someone else, I catch it, I go, garbage in, garbage out. And then I immediately changed my thought pattern towards something that I was trying to create or that was positive or, or, you know, and just, and that's it. Get, get rid of the negative thinking consciously work on it. It doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen in, you know, a week. It's a lifestyle change, but it'll make things so much more easier for you. If you can uh, find your way through that. I love that. And it is about being aware, like you said, the consciousness, because sometimes we don't even realize that we're being negative. Like they just, we just think that that's like a fact or it's just a way of the world. And it's not like just our perception of it. Right. And so one of my mentors says, catch, cancel and correct. And right. that, it's similar to what you said. Right. But she like literally goes cancel. Like she'll like do a movement and like say it out loud because Absolutely. she's, you know, re retraining her brain to like, this is, this is what we're going to think instead. And if you're around a lot of negative people, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge to find the way out, but it's not, it's not, it's still doable. Like they say that you're a result of the five people that you spend the most time with. So I spent a lot of time with Paul McCartney. I right. put him up on YouTube and I watch the interviews and I'm pretending I'm in a room with him. <laughs> like you can pick who you're spending your time with and you can just suck up the energy from them. 
Yes, that is the gift of the virtual world. We it can is. pretend that Paul McCartney is one of our top five friends. Absolutely. <laughs> and Elton John and Billy Joel. <laughs> I got them all. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. Awesome. Oh, this is just a great way to end this episode. And I knew we'd be ending on an up note. So thank you so much. I think your, your career journey is so inspiring and I appreciate all of your solid business advice as well. And I know that our audience will as well. So how can people who are listening go check out your music and connect with you online? Okay, so my website is gailtaylormusic.com and my moniker is Gail T as charged. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so you can find me, I'm everywhere. I'm on Spotify and Apple and Facebook and on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. I'm, everything's under Gail Taylor Music. And then my website is Gail Taylor Music. And yeah, if anyone enjoyed this and wants to hear more about my journey, oh my God, I'd be so honored if you went and signed up on my mailing list. That would be awesome. And so are you actually creating on TikTok right now? I could see you being super popular on TikTok. <laughs> well, 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 there's the daughter again, right? I only pair for 10 hours a week. So, <laughs> so TikTok doesn't always get it. So <laughs> but yes, we have put some stuff out on TikTok. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, my, my daughter's been working with me on TikTok too. So I'm going to definitely go check out your TikTok because I could... <laughs> I could, you just have one of those personalities that I'm like, she's going to be popular on TikTok. I can tell. <laughs> thank you. Thank well, thank you, you so again. much, Gail. Awesome. I hope everybody goes and checks out your, your website and connects with you on social media. And I appreciate everything that you shared with us today. Okay. And thanks again for having me. Thanks for listening to the Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.